Good morning, Summit family. We're so glad that you're with us this morning. We're excited about our time together. And I I just want to encourage you for the next 55 minutes to just sit down and lock in with us and just invite the presence of the Lord to come into your home. Our worship team is going to come up in just a moment and lead us in worship. And I really want to encourage you not to just sit and watch them play music, but that you enter in, that you sing with everything you have and just invite the presence of the Lord to come into your home. And we believe that over this next few minutes that you're just going to be encouraged, you're going to be strengthened, and you're going to continue to grow in your faith and your walk with the Lord. That's what we're hoping for. That's what we're believing for on this 4th of July weekend when we're excited about the independence of our nation, but most importantly, we're excited about the relationship we have with the Lord. So let's worship the Lord together. I just want to open in prayer this morning. Father, I just pray for each person that's watching, Lord, that your presence would come right into their home, that, Lord, you would just begin to move in their heart and their life. You know the challenges that they're facing. And, Father, I pray that you would meet every need according to your riches and glory. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together this morning.
sound of his voice Seas that are shaken and stirred Can be calmed and broken from my regard Through it all, through it all My eyes are on you Through it all, through it all It is well
This whole shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't take down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Well, I'm just so excited about his reckless love, aren't you? He's so good to us. And I know that a lot of people are still in this kind of crazy time. And here in California, we're having a spike in the COVID cases and they're shutting things down again and they're changing things even for us here at the church. But we can trust in the Lord that no matter what we're walking through, that he's going to be there with us and that his love for us is such an amazing thing. And I just want to encourage you this morning or whenever you're watching this, that that you just allow his presence to come right into your situation. We're going to pray for you this morning. Whatever you're facing, whether it's a physical problem, whether you're dealing with a financial problem, a situation, or whether you're dealing with relationship issues, whatever it is, I just believe that God has an answer for every one of those situations. And you need to remember that his reckless love is there for you. It means that he'll show up. He loves you no matter what you're walking through, no matter how bad you've blown it. If you'll allow him, he'll come into your situation and he'll begin to bring you to a place of encouragement and strength and faith. So let's pray together, all right? Father, I just thank you for each person that's watching this morning. That, Lord, your presence would come into their situation. Lord, those that are struggling in their health, that, Father, you would just let healing begin to flow. I always am reminded of your old covenant name, Jehovah Rapha, our healer, and that Jesus took stripes on his back for our healing. So Lord, right now, I just speak life and health to your people. Lord, I pray for those that are struggling financially. Lord, as we've gone through this crazy time, there's people that are facing some really serious situations, and I pray that you would meet every need according to your riches and glory. Your word says that you'll never see the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. So, Lord, I speak blessing over your people. 
Lord, those that are at home and they're just frustrated or fearful because of everything that we've walked through. Father, I pray that you would come bring hope and restoration into each situation. We thank you for it. We thank you that we can trust you to walk with us no matter what we're walking through. So Lord, right now, minister life. Minister hope and strength to each person in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just believe as you open your heart that the Lord's just going to begin to do new things in your heart and life. And I'm just excited about the days ahead. Even if we're walking through this crazy season, I know that God is doing something new. We're going to talk a little bit about that today. A couple of things I want to call to your attention. Listen, here at the church, if you're living here in Southern Cal and you need help, call us. Let us know. We'll do everything we can to help you. Um, We've helped a lot of different people with a lot of different things, whether it was groceries. We've helped with some rent and different things. We can't do everything for everyone, but if you're in our area, we'll do what we can, all right? And I just want to say to all of you that have been faithful and given during this season, the reason we've been able to help people is because you've been faithful. And I know that some of you don't have income coming in right now. You don't worry about it, all right? There'll be a time where you'll be able to give. But for the rest of us, you just continue to be faithful with tithes and offering. And then that allows us as a church to take care of the needs around us. We're even having to replace an air conditioner in the middle of this crazy season. And uh, if you want to help with that, don't fight that feeling, all right? But we're just uh, so encouraged because of your faithfulness. And... uh, People ask, Pastor, how can we give? Well, you can mail a check to the church. You can give on PayPal. You can go to our website, and it'll show you that. And we also have text to give now. And so um, I'm going to show you this real quick video on this and so that you know how to do it, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so watch this video real quick. Hey there, Justin here, and I wanted to show you one of the easiest ways for you to give to your church. All you got to do, send a text message. Here, I'll show you how I set it up. All I need to do is text an amount to 84321, and a link will be sent back to me. I'll tap on that link, select my church, add an email address for the receipt, enter in my payment information, and that's it. From now on, when I want to give, I just grab my phone and text an amount. All right, let's donate $10 now. And that's it. Boom! Oh, I added an extra zero. Yeah, I'm gonna need to fix that. Um, Luckily I can. Since it's been less than 30 minutes, I just send the word refund and that last donation will be refunded. (laughs) I'm gonna try it again. And there we go. And that my friends is how you can give with the text message. Happy giving. All right, so if you can help us out, great. If not, don't worry about it, all right? But we're excited about what God's doing. Uh, A lot of things are continuing here at the church. We're continuing to uh, do our men's Tuesday morning meeting at 6 a.m. We've been doing it live, and we've been doing it via Zoom, so you can join us either way, all right? Also, uh, the ladies' Bible study is continuing. Uh, Different things are happening. Pastor Matt's doing something with the youth and young adults. And so uh, we have some Bible studies that are taking place. We're just excited about it. We're also excited about our online campus. For those of you that have been joining us, um, we want to be able to connect with those of you that want to. If you just want to watch us and don't want to connect, that's cool too. But I just want to let you know next week we're going to have a a way for you to connect with us. We're going to do a discipleship class online. We're excited about it. It, so that you can be a part of our online campus. So you might still be a part of a church. That's cool. Or maybe you don't have a home church. This can be your home church, all right? So there's all this new technology is bringing us to a new place, and we're excited about the days ahead. All right? So you ready to get in the Word this morning? I'm excited about this message. Um, it's a little different uh, message because it was inspired by a song that Pastor Matt and our worship team have been doing uh, titled Rattle. And that's what I titled The Message. And in this song, which we're going to sing at the end of the service, um, it's talking about a passage of scripture from the book of Ezekiel. And I want you to go with me to this portion of scripture. Ezekiel is one of the Old Testament prophets. We call him a major prophet. And his time of ministry was during the time of the Babylonian exile. So let me give you a little bit of history, just so you know what's going on, so that you understand the message. So 
um, Ezekiel was in Judah, right? Remember, Israel had been broken into two countries after Solomon's death. And the northern kingdom of Israel had been overtaken by the Assyrians. And this was years before. And Judah, which is the southern kingdom where Jerusalem was the capital, it was still intact. And so what had happened was, is that the northern kingdom of Israel really just turned to idolatry and turned their back on the Lord. And because of that, God allowed the Assyrians to come in and overtake their country. So what was going on in Judah, Judah had been more faithful But then they had some bad kings and some of the practices of the northern kingdom had begun to happen in the southern kingdom. And slowly what took place is they began to get involved in idolatry. So what do I mean by idolatry? The people groups that were there in the promised land before God gave his people the land, they worshiped other gods, other idols. So the ones you hear a lot about is Baal, Asherah, Moloch, and some of the other gods. I'm not going to go into all of them. But they had all of these pagan ritualistic things. And one of the things that God made very clear to his people in the Ten Commandments is that thou shalt have no other gods before me. And the reason is, it's not because God is a jealous God, because those gods weren't even real, right? But the issue was, is that he wanted them to live their life according to the principles that he laid out for them, because if they live their life according to those principles, their life was better. And this is the thing that you always have to understand. Whenever God said, even in the Old Covenant, when God said, thou shalt not, he wasn't trying to take away people's fun. He created us. He knows how we were made. He knows what's going to produce the best life for us. And he established these boundaries for us. And when we live within those boundaries, life is better for us. When we begin to deviate outside of those boundaries and we involve ourselves in the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, we get involved in all these other issues in the cultures around us, it begins to produce negative responses within us that ultimately bring destruction in our life. Here's the thing that that the Bible tells us, that the wages of sin is death. That equation works all the time, even for believers When we allow ourselves to get involved in willful sin, it causes all kinds of problems. It'll destroy relationships, starting with your relationship with the Lord. And and the wonderful thing is is that God's grace is amazing. And he's not up there looking at us when we mess up to, to beat us over the head. He's saying to us, listen, if you'll live your life this way, life will be so much better. But when you deviate and you begin to follow your flesh into practices of these other nations that were around you, then you're going to begin to reap the negative consequences that that lifestyle brings. Are you with me? So it's not a matter of God was just angry and furious with them. It was a matter of they'd turn their back on what God had done for them and said, we're going to do what we want to do. And so what happened was this began to happen in the southern kingdom of Judah as well. And ultimately, King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of the Babylonians, he came in and he overthrew Judah. And he took a bunch of people captive. And there was actually two times where Nebuchadnezzar came. The second time, he totally destroyed the temple. So Ezekiel is living during this time. In fact, he spent time among the exiles as they had gone to Babylon. So when he is talking, he's talking to a group of people who had been now defeated by the enemies and they had been a a nation that was split apart. Now they're hauled off into captivity. It was really a difficult time. And you got to understand that after Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the tabernacle or the temple, that was really the connection that the children of Israel had with the Lord. And their connection came from that temple and from their their promised land. And now they find themselves in a place of total discouragement. And so we're going to pick it up towards the end of the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel 37. And it's a portion of scripture that if you've been in the church, you've probably heard people speak on it. And if you're new to the church, maybe you've never heard this before, but it's really kind of a cool portion of scripture. And that new worship song that we've been singing, Rattle, is taken from this portion of scripture. So let's go to Ezekiel chapter 37, looking at verse 1, using the NIV this morning. It says, The hand of the Lord was upon me, Ezekiel is speaking, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and he set me in the middle of a valley, and it was full of bones. And he led me back and forth among them. 
And I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, and bones that were there were very dry. And he asked me, son of man, can these bones live? So let's just stop right there and set the scene. So Ezekiel, the Lord takes him to this place. There's probably a vision. And he comes and he sees this valley that is covered in bones. And the bones have been not buried. So it was like a battlefield where there had been people that had been killed and they're laying all over. And nobody ever came back to bury them. Um, and they were they're, they're, the flesh and everything had been eaten off, dried up. And these bones were just skewed or sp- all over this valley. And, and, and Ezekiel's looking at it. Now, you got to understand that for the Jewish people, they treated their dead with respect. And they had very specific and very strict rules of how they dealt with dead bodies and leaving them out in the sun for wild animals to come and do all That's not how they dealt with their dead. And so this was really a disgraceful scene in so many ways, right? And so Ezekiel is looking at all these bones. And as he's looking there, the Lord takes him and he sees how many there are, massive amounts of them. And he says to him, son of man, can these bones live? Now, let me just tell you something. Right now, when Ezekiel was looking at these bones, he knew that there's no way those bones could live. But he was dealing with God. So how does he respond? How do we respond to the Lord when he asks us a question? Because here's the thing. There's parallels to what Ezekiel is seeing and what he's saying to his people in his time. And then there's parallels to when we read it and how it can apply to us in our situation. So he's looking at these bones. He says, can they live? And he says this. He says, I said, O sovereign Lord, you alone know good answer, right? He just threw the ball back into God's court. Verse four, then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now in that song that we've been singing, that's one of the phrases, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And then we go live, live. Anyway, it's just great. And it's taken right from this portion of scripture. So he says to him, prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and I will make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin and I will put breath in you and you will come to life and then you will know that I am the Lord. So he's saying to Ezekiel, you see all of these dry bones can they live? And Ezekiel's going, no, unless you do something supernatural. You see, Ezekiel understood that God was the God of the supernatural. He was a man of faith. He was a prophet in his own time. And you got to understand something that being a prophet in that time wouldn't have been an easy thing because all of the promises of God and the covenant that God had made with his people, it looked like everything was falling apart. The Babylonians had come and he had hauled them off and destroyed the temple. The people are scattered. The northern kingdom of Israel has been utterly destroyed by the Assyrians. The kingdom had been split and now the valley of dry bones is there. And they're saying, there's no way these bones can live again. They were defeated. They were discouraged. And the word of the Lord comes to Ezekiel and he says, prophesy to these bones. Verse 7, he goes on and he says, so I prophesied. As I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh began to appear upon them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, Come from the four winds, breathe, O breath, and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied, and as as he commanded me, and into the slain that they may live. So I prophesied, he commanded, sorry, I said that twice. He commanded me, and breath entered them. And they came to life, and they stood upon their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, These bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone and we are cut off. 
So Ezekiel is seeing this whole prophetic scene, and now the Lord's telling him what it means. He says, the children of Israel are saying, our bones are dried up. The prophecies, the covenant, the promises of God, they're nowhere to be found. They're all dried up. And what does he say? This vast army is there, but there is no hope for them. Son of man, these, whole, these bones are the whole army. They're dried up. Their hope is gone. We are cut off. Verse 12. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Oh, my people, I'm going to open your graves. I'm going to bring you up from them. I'm going to bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and I bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. So this is a powerful statement and a powerful portion of scripture because I think many of us can relate to this valley of dry bones. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, when we look at it first, you always want to look at what the, the contemporary prophet is saying and who he's speaking to, right? We call that finding the context of what Scripture's talking about. It helps us from misappropriating Scripture to situations that don't really apply. So when we look at it here, the historical context from Ezekiel's life, living in Babylon, we help to see what's really going on. So he's speaking to physical Israel, and he's speaking through Ezekiel. You see, these people had been carried off, and they, it was a nation that had been split in two. And everything that they thought they had and had been established by the Lord has now fallen apart. But they're at a place to where they don't even really recognize that it was their own idolatry and walking away from the truth of who God was that put them in that situation. And they find themselves in this situation. And when you looked at what was going on from the outside, it was easy to see. Yeah, they were a valley of dry bones. They were at a place to where they weren't experiencing the fullness of who God was. You see, Ezekiel prophesied to this broken people who had been devastated by the Babylonian conquest and captivity. They were crushed and they were in this place where this idolatry had led them into a place that took them away from the promises of God. You see, when we talk about these defeated people, Ezekiel makes some promises to them. When you look through the book of Ezekiel, we see Ezekiel saying several different things. Ezekiel, in, in chapter 36, verses 22 and 23, he says this. He says that there was a promise that the day of the Lord will be, bring vindication and holiness to his name that God was going to come and he was going to turn the situation around. He also said that there was a day when he will sprinkle them with water and cleanse them from the filth of their idolatry. He said that in 36.25. He also says that there's a day when he will give them a new heart, a heart of flesh, and he will deal with their dead hearts of stone in Ezekiel 36.26. And he also said that there was a day where he would put his spirit within them to enable them to obey him. Now, this is an important one because, listen, many of us, especially those of us that have been Christians for a while, we know what it is to try to be good. Listen, I'm third generation preacher, right? My grandparents on both sides were preachers. My dad was a preacher. My mom was a preacher. My brothers were preachers. My sister married a preacher and she preaches. Man, being in ministry and around ministry is all I know. And I know what it is to try to be good and always come up short. And there's a lot of things that I've never done because of the way I was raised, but I know the frustration of not being able to be who I feel like God wants me to be. And what happens is, is it begins to suck the life out of us. And we begin to look at ourselves and then the enemy comes with condemnation. And he begins to tell us that you're never going to measure up. You're never going to be what God wants you to be. You're never going to get victory over this sin or that attitude or this thing. And it's just the way you are and, and nothing's ever going to change. And what it does is it sucks the life and the hope out of you. 
And then the enemy comes and begins to bring that condemnation over and over and over. And we find ourselves at a place to where we still love the Lord, kind of. But our relationship with him just isn't what it's supposed to be. I don't know if you can relate to that, but I know that a lot of you can. And here's the thing that I see as a pastor. And, and, you know, maybe I'm getting older now. You know, I got gray hair and the whole thing. And I'm listening to Christian people. And I'm watching what they're involved in with their life. And the, the philosophy and the concepts of the world are just like those idolatrous people that lived around the children of Israel. And it's drawing the attention of Christians away from the things of God to the things of the culture. And there's a whole bunch of Christians who would say that, yeah, I'm a Christian. They show up to church once in a while and and they know some worship songs and, and they have a Bible. But on the inside, they're just getting really dry. And the concept of serving the Lord is becoming harder and harder. And they've begun to compromise things. And and there's a mixture of their faith. And and their faith is becoming weak. And they're looking at the world and they're saying, well, maybe I can do that. And it doesn't really matter. And they're making compromises. And what's happening is, is it's sucking the moisture, the spiritual life out of people. We begin to reflect this valley of dry bones just the way the children of Israel did. And it's an amazing thing that as we read what God says to the children of Israel, he says that things are going to happen to them. And this is what struck me as I was reading this again this last week. When he says to Ezekiel, can these bones live again? He says, only you know, Lord. What he was saying was, there's there's no way that these bones can live outside of a miracle. I want you to look me right in the eyes. There are things in your life right now that you have come to a place to where there's no hope. It might be a relationship. It might be your relationship with the Lord, your faith. It could be a a marriage situation. It could be a financial situation. It could be something with your family or or hurts you've gone through with the church. And there's, there's things that have gone on in your life that has brought you to a place really where you're at a place of hopelessness. And you're saying, I don't even know what I believe anymore because of the pain and the frustration that you've gone through. It sucked the life and ultimately it has sucked the faith right out of you. And you're at a place to where you can identify more with the dry bones than you can Ezekiel. And Ezekiel is there and he says, only you know, Lord. And what does the Lord say to him? He says, I want you to prophesy to these bones. Now, what does that mean? We know Ezekiel is a prophet. And what what does it mean to prophesy? Well, most of us, when we think of prophecy, we think of somebody who's going to tell us our future, right? They're going to tell us something about the future. A prophetic word is where God speaks specifically to an individual or a group. And God, when he speaks a word, there is power, supernatural power behind it. And so when he says to Ezekiel, Ezekiel, I want you to prophesy to these bones. And what did he say to say to them? Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. You're going to live. You're going to live. That's why I love this song. Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. It's time for us to live. And I want you to hear something that I believe that God is beginning to speak to some of us. And he's beginning to say, listen, you've allowed the faith to be sucked out of you long enough. And God is ready to speak life into your life, into your situation, and first and foremost, into your relationship with him. You see, I believe that so many of us have come to this place to where we've just drifted from the Lord. And our faith is so weak that we don't believe. And if the Lord brought us to the valley of dry bones and he said to us, Can these bones live again? Our response wouldn't have been like Ezekiel's. It'd be, there's no way. Of course not. Look at them. There's there's no way these bones could live. But because Ezekiel was still a man of faith, 
he knew that he was talking to the creator of the universe. He was talking to the man who scooped up the mountains and dug out the oceans. He was talking to the man who could do anything, that the power and life and death was in his tongue. And so when he said to him, he's looking at the bones with his eye of flesh, thinking, no, they can't live unless you do something supernatural. So my question to all of us, including myself today, is this. Are we ready and willing to allow God to do something supernatural in us to bring us to a place of life again? You see, when I've heard people preach on this, there's so many things that you can, nuances that you can talk about, the breath and the life, the, the bones coming together, <coughs> excuse me, and everything else. But, but the reality for me was this, is that the prophetic word has to be spoken and you have to have faith in that word. But if you allowed yourself to become so dry and so distant in your relationship with the Lord, our thoughts and our concepts are always more what the world thinks. We deal in the realm of the flesh rather than the spirit. And the whole premise of this portion of Scripture is this, is that God said to Ezekiel, tell my people that I'm going to breathe life into them again. And that, that standing army of Israelite soldiers, I'm going to breathe life in them again, and I'm going to bring you back to the promise, and you're going to be strengthened, and I'm going to do a miracle in you. And so as we look at this, Ezekiel was talking about his contemporaries who'd been hauled off to Babylon, who were now starting to come back to Judah, and that there would be one kingdom, and ultimately the fulfillment of this prophecy takes place when Jesus comes back again. Now here's what I want to challenge you with. As we're in this season right now, we have a global pandemic. We have racial tension. Our political system is crazy. Our, our culture has drifted so far away from biblical truth, it's unbelievable. And an awful lot of us as Christians reflect the valley of dry bones. And what I just feel the Lord is speaking to me, and maybe I'm just preaching to myself this morning. He's saying to me that it's time for me to get a prophetic word a fresh word, a rhema word inside of me about this next season in my life, about the people in our church and connected with our online campus, that, that we need to have a voice, a prophetic voice that's saying, listen, God's not done with us, that there is something that we're called to do. And no matter how crazy the culture is and how dry the church might be, God is looking for a group of people that he can speak into that will have faith to respond to the prophetic word and begin to allow the Spirit of God to come inside of us and begin to bring about fresh vision for the days ahead. I believe that God is looking for a remnant that he can pour his Spirit into to see the world transitioned and come to a new place of faith. You see, as I've been reading through the Psalms in our daily devotional that we're doing, and as I was reading this portion of Scripture, we are so limited to our mindset of time. But God has a plan that's unfolding, and he is going to see his plan fulfilled. And he's looking for people who will be people of faith that he can fulfill it through. I don't want to be dry bones anymore. I don't want to be somebody who's lost hope and faith. As I look at the culture, there's times where I get what I call old man syndrome, where I look at the culture and I go, you know, you kind of get that head shake going, man, it's, it's getting bad out there. Listen, it's always been bad out there. Sin has always been dark. It's always a problem. But God is, is looking for a group of people that will grab a hold of the prophetic word and begin to believe God for the days ahead that he can do a new thing in your life and in your situation, in your city, in your church, and in your family. This is what I feel like God's calling me to. That I need to get to a place to where I begin to cry out to him and ask him to begin to show me 
and give me a fresh word. How long has it been since you've heard from the Lord? How long has it been? I'm, I'm not saying, listen, I'm not saying you got to go find some prophet and get a prophetic word. But I'm saying it's time for us to get back into God's word. It's time for us to reestablish our faith in him. So that when we look at the situation and it looks like a valley of dry bones that has no hope. And we know there's no way that those bones can live. That we still have enough faith to say, Lord, if you want them to live, they'll live. The fact is, is that an awful lot of us have come to a place to where our response wouldn't be, if you say so, it would be, no, there's no way. God is calling us, the church today, to come alive. There needs to be a sound, a rattling sound, a sound where the body of Christ begins to wake up, to where we begin to step into a new hope and a fresh understanding that we begin to believe God to use us, to use our church, to use my family and my circumstances, and that my faith can be encouraged once again. This has been a theme that I've been talking about in this season because I think it's so important that God is moving in our hearts and he's trying to wake up his church. He's trying to bring us to life. So whether we're asleep or whether we're a valley of dry bones, whatever it is, here's the wonderful good news is that God has the ability, the supernatural ability, to bring about transformation no matter what you're walking through. Some of you are dealing with situations in your home. Maybe it's a a relationship that you're dealing with, finances, whatever it could be. Those are things that you look at and you go, Lord, there's no hope. There's no hope for this situation. Some of you have been dealing with areas of sin in your life and you've tried to to stop. You've tried to be good and you've only failed time and time again. And then the enemy is right there to rub your nose in it. And, And you're at a place to where it's begun to affect your faith and you're going, what's the use? What good is it? I, I, there's no way I can ever do it. Listen, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. What's the word of the Lord for you? The word of the Lord for you is that you'll allow the prophetic word begin to speak life into that situation. That you'll come to a place of faith and you begin to see God as the supernatural creator of the universe who can turn your situation around. And some of you this morning, you're at such a place of discouragement and defeat. When I say those words, you just kind of shake your head and go, yeah, preacher, I've heard it all before. But my challenge for you today is this. It's time to go deeper. It's time to begin to cry out to him. It's time to do the things that you did first to get that first love back and allow God to do a work in you. The wonderful hope we have as new covenant believers is that Jesus died on a cross He shed his blood to wash away our sins. That he did everything necessary at Calvary to set us free from the law of sin and death. That our faith can be encouraged. And that no matter what the circumstances are, even if you're looking at a valley of dry bones, that he can speak life and he can speak a prophetic word over you and he can turn that situation around. Some of you at one point in your life, you saw yourself doing something great for the kingdom of God. Along the way, you got sidetracked. You got involved with the things of the culture and the world. And now your walk with the Lord is less than stellar. God can turn it around in a moment and put you back on the path to fulfill that purpose and destiny. I just sense that God is calling some of you that are watching this morning to a place of closeness with him. And I just want to say to you, listen, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Live, live. It's time to come to that place to where you believe that God's going to turn it around. He loves you today. He has a plan for you. And it's time for us to press in. Let me close with this. I just believe with all of my heart that God is calling me to spend some time fasting in prayer. And, and, it's, and it's just for me. I'm not telling you what to do. But I believe that the Lord will speak to some of you. There might be some things that I need to get out of my life that I know have been distractions that have pulled me this way or that.
Maybe I need to shut off some devices. Maybe I need to, to, to isolate myself from certain relationships that I know that are unhealthy. Maybe I need to discipline my life to be in God's word and to feed my spirit. There are things that I believe he's speaking to some of you. And I know that some of you have heard these things so many times in your life and you've tried and failed. But listen, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. God is trying to speak life into you. He's going to turn the thing around. He wants to replace your stony heart with a heart of flesh and bring you to a place of new life and new hope with a supernatural word that can break through anything. Valley of dry bones, he can make them live. Situation in your life, where you've had continual failure, he can turn it around. He can bring restoration to that relationship. He can turn your business around. He can bring that wayward kid home. God has the ability supernaturally to work. But notice what he said to Ezekiel. You prophesy. And then he told him what to say. I hope this makes sense to you today, but God is just challenging me that it's time for us to press in like never before. And I know this isn't a, an eloquent message, but it's what I feel like the Lord is saying to us. There is a message in this valley of dry bones that goes beyond just a song that we sing. But as we sing that song, our worship team is going to come back and they're going to sing this song and they'll have the words below. I want you to read those words and I want you to sing it out with all of your heart and I want you to let God bring those dry bones to life in your situation. He loves you today. You hear me? And if you've never given your life to Christ, it just starts by saying, Lord, I need you. Come into my heart. Forgive me. Wash me in your precious blood. I want to know you. And you pray that from your heart. He'll show up on your behalf. And you'll be a part of his family. And dry bones will come to life. And God will do something brand new for you. I just believe God is starting something new in our church. In my life as a pastor. In my life as a husband and a father and now a grandfather. We're going to see God do some great things in the days ahead. I want you to come with us. But it starts by opening your heart and letting him speak life over the dry bones in your life. The worship team's coming, and I want them to sing that song, and I want you to sing it with them. And let's just close this time this morning together. We'll worship and allow the Lord to speak to you. I believe that he's going to speak to you as an individual different than what he might be saying to me. If you'll open your heart, I know he's going to show up on your behalf. Come on, let's worship the Lord together. Fire, 
Stirring something new You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime